Welcome to the besotted Pride of West London podcast ticket special. In the wake of Norwich charging £35 and Leeds also charging £34 for Bees fans when they go up there, there was uproar. Social media went mad. Besotted decided to go out and talk to the fans to hear exactly what their thoughts were on paying over £30 to go to football. Plus, we also speak to Mark Devlin, the CEO of Brentford, on his thoughts on the £35 match ticket. And in the studio, we get a little discussion going. We've got Michael Brunskill from the Football Supporters Federation. We've got Peter Lemoore, who's a Norwich fan. And we've got the boys from Besotted, myself, Billy Grant, Dave Lane and Nick Carthew. This debate is taken from our full Norwich podcast and you can catch all the Besotted podcasts on audioboom.com forward slash Besotted. They're also up on our website, which is besotted.co.uk. And you can also catch us on iTunes as well, if you just put in Besotted, B-E-E-S-O-T-T-E-D. I'm not going to Norwich, I'm not going to Leeds, both are way too expensive, especially after just doing Brighton, which was almost as bad. I don't think any club is justified in charging that much money for, for anything. I mean, to be honest, I don't think Premiership football is worth that. I would have gone to Leeds because I've got friends to stay with, so that cuts down the cost. If it was cheaper, I wouldn't think that more than 25 is reasonable given the price of other tickets. I don't fancy going to um, Norwich, well, basically because of the, I mean, the cost. I don't, I don't mind paying sort of £30 for an adult ticket. Um, what I do object to is paying a lot of money for, you know, I take my boy to, uh, to, to all the away games. I do object to paying sort of over sort of ten pound for a, for a kids ticket. Not only that, it's you know, it's a long way to go. Um, it's um, it, it's you know, it's another fifty, sixty quid in, in petrol or or on the train, and and you just have to work out how much it it's worth to actually go and watch a game of football. And on this occasion, for Norwich, I'm, you know, it's working out about £150. Uh, I will be attending the, uh, the Norwich game. Unfortunately, I'm at the Leeds one. The ticket prices are, don't get me wrong, very expensive. Uh, for obviously a game of football. Uh, but unfortunately, that is the, uh, the world we're living in, where uh, teams can charge a bit more um, than obviously we'd like. Yes, they could, they could lower prices to, uh, to make it more affordable. You've only got to look at uh, sort of the, uh, the way strategies abroad, the way sort of Germany work with... Uh, their season ticket price has been four times the, uh, the price of one Norwich game. Um, however, they don't seem to be appearing to, to do anything about it other than potentially freezing prices. Um, but I guess clubs really look at it in the sense of if people are willing to pay it, then it's almost within the line of uh, the guidelines, then, then so be it, to be honest with you. I don't think, uh, I don't think they're taking into account the fans uh, too much at all. I am going to Norwich. That's mainly due to the fact that I bought my train ticket went in advance but I did regret it as soon as I saw the prices of the tickets it's a bit cheeky as well that they don't offer any sort of concessions for 18 to 20 year olds um, Leeds definitely I won't be doing 35 quid again it's a bit of a joke if I would I would have considered going if it was say 20 to 25 pound I think that's a bit reasonable at championship level I think it should be capped to for away fans, £25. I think that's a reasonable price. But when you're hitting 30 35 quid, it's getting a bit of a joke, really. So £35, especially for a team that is one of which is still receiving parachute payments from the Premiership. £35. They're not even London clubs. The cost of living in London is is so much more than, than anywhere else. But yet they still think they can charge that type of figure. I'm not going to Norwich or Leeds because the tickets are too expensive. Um, I would be happy to pay something in the region of 25 to £28 pounds for tickets, but not the, not the figures that they're asking for. So I'm uh, not going to the Norwich game. I think it's, uh, I think £35 pounds is, is a bit beyond the pale, really. There's a line that's got to be drawn. Um, I mean, there's a business case in this. I think you're, you're offering, lots of clubs are offering similar products. I don't think... The product of that is Norwich Football Club is, is any better than than what Brentford offer or you know any particular club in the league. If you know for whatever reason you know Real Madrid were in this league, I could understand and the foot the kind of football that they play and the, the footballers you get to watch, I could understand them charging 30, 35 pounds a ticket. But Real Madrid aren't in this league. Norwich have only scored 
49 goals all season. I mean, we're just behind them on 42. Bournemouth have scored 57. They score more goals than everyone else. They don't charge a lot more. So I don't think that's, that's uh, you know, it's not really an issue. I think it's, uh, you've got to look at how to run a business, the end product. Who's who's going to, who's, who's, who ends up paying for this? It's, it's the spectator. It's the club's will uh, damage their reputation in the long we term. We need to get towards a system where there's either either agreements between two cl- each club in the league. So we Brentford agree to pay uh, charge away fans twenty five pounds. Norwich do the same. Uh, if you know if clubs won't agree on that, we'll agree to charge fans thirty pounds, and then Brentford fans will pay thirty pounds when they go there. That's one way of doing it. Or having set pay structures so all League Two away tickets fifteen pounds, League One. Eighteen pounds, championship twenty five pounds. I mean, footy, Leeds, and Norwich game. I, I, mean, I probably would have considered going. Um, you know, uh, admittedly, I went to Brighton last week. It was thirty pounds to get in, and I paid that. There was an appeal there because it was a new ground for me. I've been to Norwich. I've been to Leeds. You know, really, it would have taken a fair ticket price to draw me in. I went to Huddersfield away in December. They charged ten pounds to get there. If Huddersfield charged thirty pounds. There was no way I would have gone. So the ticket price really, especially at this point in the year, late January for Norwich. It's a hard sell to get someone to sort of travel at what is typically a difficult month financially. Um, you know, they need to rope people in the ticket prices. They charge fairly, I reckon I would have gone. You know, what the fans don't realise is that is, is their part in this whole theatre of football. Um, and the clubs seem to neglect the value of the fans as well by charging these ticket prices. I mean, for me, um, the whole package as it's sold around the world, this whole package up thing that's sold um, is sold as a, as, as a full stadium full of atmosphere um, if the fans stop going because it's too much that is cheap and straight away the fans have that power we can put our foot down and stop um, uh, you know and stop these prices being charged I mean, what do we want a lucid atmosphere every week like we get at Chelsea you know, I heard just last week um, on the radio there was Chelsea fans one literally crying he was in tears on the radio saying that the atmosphere is club was 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 no more. It was finished, and the whole reason for this is because the elderly fans have been priced out, and they've sold themselves out to the corporate, uh, the corporate market. I'm sure it's not very good for them, but it's killed the atmosphere of our club. So long term, you know, do we want that to happen to our game? No, we don't. I mean, what's a fair price? Um, there seems to be a bit of a consensus around that at the moment, saying you know, for this twenty is plenty um, campaign. You know. So, it rhymes very nicely. That helps, uh, but you know I think twenty pounds is is a fair price, especially for away fans. I mean, it, it grates a little bit when Leeds, in particular, are I think their maximum price is I've heard is twenty four pound, or at least that is a ticket price. They're charging the away pounds thirty four pounds. The away fans thirty four. I mean, yeah, that's 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 exploiting the away fan. I don't know if they think West London's an affluent area or whatnot, but it, it, it isn't fair when you when you factor in the travel as well. There's got to be limits, and I think uh, twenty pound probably is that. And especially when you factor in the um, the television money, and and how that, especially for Norwich, maybe getting parachute payments still, I believe, and Leeds have had their money in their time, and, and they blew it for different reasons. But the, the the fraction of the gate money compared to the away ticket price it is such that these clubs can charge that lesser amount to 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 help the away fan. And if all the clubs do it. Everyone's benefiting from it. Everyone's fans are gaining. It's not just one club making a sacrifice. We also chatted to Mark Devlin, the Brentford CEO, and he gave us his thoughts on us being charged £35 for a match ticket for Norwich. So thanks for taking time out to talk to us today, Mark. Um, As you're probably aware, there's a bit of a furore over the prices charged by both Norwich and Leeds United for our forthcoming matches with them. Norwich are charging me 35 quid, and Leeds are charging 34. I've got to ask you a question, Mark. Do you think that this price is too much? Uh, personally, I think uh, more than 30 quid for a championship football is, is too much. And I think if um, pricing is a, is a bit of a sensitive one across football, but if we're not careful, we'll overprice people and we'll end up playing to, to half-empty stadiums and uh, some clubs are already suffering from that. But uh, Leeds and Norwich obviously have their business models, they've got their revenue models, they've got their budgets, but um, on a personal basis, I think it's, uh, it's too much money for, uh, for championship football. Does Brentford sometimes get frustrated by the fact that, you know, look at our club, We've got Borough coming down. They sold out their allocation in a couple of days. You know, every single club practically has come down there and they've sold out their allocation. 
you know, if we wanted to, we're charging these clubs 23, 24, 25 pounds. If we wanted to, you know, we could have charged them more. I think I think it's uh, it's a fair point, Billy. I mean, it's um, the rules at the moment mean that we have to charge uh, for the equal uh, for the equal facilities offered to home fans. So uh, when we put the visitors in Brook Road, we charge them exactly the same prices as we would charge up in the Ealing Road Terrace, and the uh, the seats in Brook Road are based on the uh, seat prices in New Road. So it's the cheaper of the of the seat prices that we have. If I'm honest with you, you're right. I mean, it's um, with the exception of, uh, well, Rotherham particularly, but probably only one or two other clubs that um, didn't sell out and didn't sell out, as you say, within a week of going on sale. Uh, and we could charge a lot more money, but the way the rules stand at the moment is if we put the price up for away fans up, then we would need to put the prices up in Ealing Road and, uh, and, in, and in New Road. And we don't particularly want to penalise our own fans. So it is something that I'm going to talk to the Football League about to see if they can look into these rules and regs. Uh, as I say, Norwich and Leeds, I've no doubt um, they've got uh, comparable facilities at, at 35 and 34 quid along the side rather than behind the goals. Um, and they will say that they're, they're, they're complying with rules, which I'm sure they are, uh, but I would, I would say that the rules are, are probably wrong. Uh, what really frustrates me, and I feel the frustration from fans, Billy, is that... Um, some of our own fans say, well, you know, if, we're, if they're charging us that, why, why, why can't we charge them that when, we, uh, when, when there are visitors? Uh, two wrongs probably don't make a right, but I, I come back to the rules and regs. They, they cover themselves and they probably comply with the Football League pricing regulations, which are there to try and protect the fleecing of away fans, <laughs> which is, uh, I know it might find it uh, laughable, but um, it allows us to not suddenly charge you know, a perceived big team a lot of money um, just because they're down there. We do have to charge at the same price as, uh, as, as home fans. So um, that's, that's the reason why we can't do that at the moment, but that's not to say we can't speak to the Football League and say that there are these anomalies. Um, and we, uh, we we ought to have another look at the whole uh, at the whole pricing uh, rules and <laughs> see if they could be a little bit fairer, uh, or at least make uh, clubs understand you know that they need to do something about them. Because you know, come back to your earlier point, uh, anything north of thirty quid, in my opinion, is is far too much. And I mean, we don't believe in this tit for tat um, <laughs> scenario just because. You know, Norwich charge us 35, we should charge them 35. In fact, the fact that we charge them 23 actually shows that we have, you know, we've got a different ethos than what they may have. As you say, they may have a different model. They've got, a, you know, there's the Away Fans Matter campaign, which is happening at the moment now as well, which is very much focusing on Away fans, because obviously when Away fans travel, not do they only have to pay for match tickets, they've got to pay for, you know, their travel, they've got to pay for food and drink. You know, as, as one fan that, you know, that tweeted us said that, you know, I can't afford to go to Norwich because for me and my son, it's going to cost me £150. So he's made the decision not to go. Um, also, it's interesting, I mean, you must have had a look around Brighton because obviously Brighton have made it much more and tried to make it more amenable for Way fans. So they've got the posters in the back, they have the Brentford badges, you know, they've tried to say that their pricing reflects the fact that you also can get transport free to the ground. So I'm just wondering that, you know, different clubs do different things to actually kind of accommodate Away fans. And uh, you've mentioned obviously this pricing issue, but what, what else do you think can be done to sort of to accommodate Away fans? Well, I do think that um, at Brighton, I think Cardiff have tried it as well. I, my understanding down at Brighton was that people behind the, um, the kiosk stand there were all wearing Brighton shirts, uh, Brighton shirts, Brentford shirts, because they'd asked us about it. And I think Cardiff might have trialled this scheme, and they believe that it, uh, anything that makes visiting fans feel a little bit more wanted, a little bit more... Um, uh, in Brighton's case, what they said to me was, if fans are looking at going to away games and this one and this one are very expensive, when they see that uh, if they come to our place, there might be a local beer on sale, uh, the colour scheme is all going to reflect the visiting team and so forth, they might be inclined to not go to certain away games and make sure they come to Brighton. And I think it's... Um, we, we're, it's certainly something we're trying to uh, be a bit more welcoming, even at, at, at Griffin Park, because of the nature of the stadium. We're trying just to, we're not going to, we can't go to the length that Brighton has, but I think we can, as football clubs, show our appreciation of visiting fans. Um, quite often, and it depends on the club, but quite often visiting fans can be the most difficult to manage, um, whether it's getting them into the ground, whether it is uh, uh, the. Um, 
behaviour towards kiosk staff or stewards. Quite often, because they're away from home, they sort of just feel it's almost like, well, we can take a few liberties. That's not all clubs and that's not all fans. But that has generally been the, the thought process in previous years. And there's this new culture amongst some clubs, and we're the same. We're trying to introduce it as well, in that if you're a bit more welcoming, uh, try and value uh, visiting fan support in the same way that you value uh, home fans, that it, uh, it changes the behaviours and, and so forth. So um, there is a there is a move. Uh, again, from a personal perspective, my focus is on trying to trying to build the uh, the home fan base. But that doesn't mean that we have to exclude visitors because you know we go back to Maggie Thatcher's days and we try and ban away fans. You get the atmosphere is totally different when there are no visiting fans. It just the whole experience is different. And as a football fan myself, I'd hate uh, I'd hate that you know clubs even thought about that on health and safety grounds because you know having a, a couple of thousand or whatever it is visiting fans there all together. They all tend to sing together. They create a lot of noise, and, it, and it's, um, it's a, a good way of challenging the home support to, uh, to up their game as well and take them on from a vocal point of view. Interesting little exchange we had with the Norwich fans. Some Norwich fans, obviously used to playing the higher prices, didn't understand what the Brentford fans were complaining about. They were saying it's supply and demand, the price is what it is, and if you don't like it, you don't have to turn up. Um, also, some say it's inevitable as teams get more successful that the prices will rise. Now... I'm going to sort of, this supply and demand thing, I'm going to sort of quote two examples here. Recently, we had the situation where Brentford played Chelsea in the FA Cup. That was a massive high demand game. We had people going around the blocks, queuing up in the snow for tickets that time. Brentford sat down there and made a decision. They could have sold those tickets for £30, £35 starting off because there was such high demand for that. But you made a decision to charge £25, I think up to up maybe two or three quid, up to £25 for a particular reason. Second example is also, I, I was very lucky enough to get a ticket for the AFC Wimbledon versus Liverpool game recently. Those tickets were like gold dust, OK? That stadium only holds about 4,500. You could have sold tickets for 50 quid and they would have gone in that game. AFC Wimbledon decided to keep tickets at £16 for a particular reason. I'm just wondering, how do you balance up this kind of price-to-charge thing? Because there's a supply and demand thing there. It's a huge demand, but you decided to, 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 to price it at a particular point from actually balancing up the, the ethos again, as you talk about, about the fans. It's a, it is a tough balancing act because... Um, for clubs that, uh, and, and Wimbledon would have been one of those ones, as you say, I'm sure Wimbledon could have doubled the prices, uh, and that cash injection would have really helped them, whether it was to bring in players, whether it was to put it into the infrastructure, whether it was to help them find a new home, God, God only knows what they would have done. But they, they weighed up the fact that they were on TV, they were getting some live TV money, and that came into play with us when we played Chelsea. We didn't know that we were going to get a draw and get a second TV, live TV game out of it, but we did know we were on TV. It did attract a fairly substantial team. TV fee, uh, and it allowed us to um, uh, charge a little bit extra uh, because we felt there was an opportunity to charge a little bit extra, but without without going over the top. I mean, we did have a we did initially think that we would just keep the prices the same, but we just felt it was an opportunity to charge a little bit more. Chelsea fans were obviously going to. Um, come in their numbers and fill the away end and we, we just felt it was a, a chance to just increase our revenue and take take an opportunity to bring some money in into a business which generally loses money and is obviously um, is uh, propped up is the wrong expression but is uh, is built on um, Matthew Benham's continued uh, annual investment into the club which we agree with Matthew every year and my job is to try and make sure that the budget uh, adheres to that and that we never have to go back to Matthew for any more money than uh, we've agreed with him at the start of the year that he would put into the club and that's how we run the uh, we run the place because obviously we can't make much money out of Griffin Park on non-match day so it, it, it uh, hence the reason for Lionel Road obviously so it is a tough uh, balancing act uh, uh, Billy but from our perspective not only uh, we've still got a job to go to fill Griffin Park I mean you know a big challenge for us is to is to sell home tickets quicker than we currently do because um uh, when tickets are on general sale, Middlesbrough, for instance, they sold out very quickly. And we know for a fact now that we get, we're getting dozens of calls every day from Middlesbrough fans. And if they could, they'd be buying in home areas. But we obviously don't want to take that opportunity. We want home supporters to, um, to, to, to buy tickets. We want to encourage more people to come and watch Brentford. And the challenge for us is working with the fan base to, to get them to, uh, to book their tickets earlier so that there is absolutely no chance of visiting fans being able to buy tickets in home areas areas. 
and uh, getting a, the right pricing level for that as, as, as a growing club is, is, a, is a key component. And I think we're, we're not too far off it, but it's a reason why our family prices and our kids' prices are so, are so good, I believe, because our prices are generally ones that clubs offer as a special offer, whereas they're generally available throughout the whole season at Griffin Park, and because that's a key area that we're looking to grow into, trying to get more kids, more families along to support uh, Brentford. Maybe they're ones that have supported some of the other teams in the local areas they either can't afford or can't get tickets, and we want to make sure that we can capture their, their hearts and minds now. So we do need to get monies in. We have got budgets to adhere to, but I'm looking at trying to fill Griffin Park, and then longer term, how, how is it we can, uh, we can ensure that we get at least 15,000, 16,000 Bees fans into uh, to the new stadium, because that's what we're going to need, and we're a long way from getting that on a regular basis at the moment, although we are growing. So, Mark, you explained to us that you are going to meet the Football League because you need to bring up a few of these, uh, th- these issues that you've got, um, pricing issues. When you go to the Football League, ideally, what result would you like to get out of them? You talked about reciprocal pricing. You talked about actually getting the pricing down for other clubs. But ideally, what's the result that you want? OK, so, that, so the Football League have two or three meetings a year, and I will bring it up as, a, as an AOB point at, uh, at the meeting next month. And I'll also do a bit of work behind the scenes with some of the members of, of the Football League uh, executive team um, before that and get a gauge from them on the right way to go about this. For me, I'd like, us to, I'd like the rules to be relaxed so that clubs can... Um, uh, can be a, uh, so it, we're not all having to adhere to uh, charging the same area, uh, charging the same sort of prices as you would for home fans. But there obviously has to be a rule in place that stops us from taking the mickey out of visiting fans because it will rebound on our own travelling supporters as well if we're not careful. But it's just a relaxation of the rules that mean that if you want to do, uh, if you want to offer lower prices, if you want to um, uh, offer promotions uh, to home fans, that uh, we can we have a bit more flexibility in doing that. And that the rules can, that they're a bit rigid at the moment uh, in terms of uh, the fairness uh, of how visiting fans are priced. And I'd like to see some sort of relaxation and some sort of conversation agreement between clubs that they won't. Leeds, for instance, didn't decide until just a few days ago what category we were going to be. Now, we made our minds up right at the start of the season about categories. Um, with a crystal ball, we might have made Middlesbrough a Category A game because both teams are up the top. I'm sure Middlesbrough fans would have still paid another two or three quid to come and watch their team on uh, on Saturday week. But uh, uh, but that also would have affected home fans as well. Our own fans would have had to pay more to come in. But we stuck to that decision. Norwich, funny enough, because it was a Tuesday night, we made that a decision to be a Category B game. Norwich probably on a Saturday would have been a Category A game. So just what I'm hoping for, Billy, in a, in a nutshell, is that we... Um, we get a degree of flexibility uh, to be fairer to visiting fans and that we can um, promote, our, promote tickets and prices in a, in a different way than the, the rigid rules currently allow us to. And just quickly, categorisation, because um, a lot of fans don't know, but what is the pricing levels and categorisation for Brentford? Is it between 23 and 25 quid or something like that? What, for, for home fans? Uh, yeah, well, for, well, for away fans. For away fans, yes. Yeah. So the, the away fans will pay um, exactly... Uh, for instance, Category A games, um, visiting fans will pay uh, £26 in advance to sit, because that's the same as the new road price, and they'll pay £25 to stand. And uh, for a Category B game, they will pay £24 to sit and £23 to stand, and that price is increased uh, in the, at the same time as it's increased to home fans in advance of, uh, of match days. So there are this year there will have been one, two, three, four, five, something like seven or eight Category B games, uh, which, as I say, include Norwich and Middlesbrough. And the ones still to come are Blackpool and Huddersfield. So, you know, those fans, Huddersfield, for instance, I believe they did a special price for when we went up to Huddersfield, and it was a very fair price. And I think they, we took uh, the best part of 700 up there uh, a few weeks before Christmas. I certainly think there's probably 150, 200 more fans that would have been able to go at that time of the year had Huddersfield charged their normal prices. So Huddersfield took a common sense approach to things. Um, not all clubs see it that way. Um, Norwich, there is a part of me, comes back to your earlier point, Billy, uh, they've been in the Premier League, they've paid higher prices, 
um, their fans are used to paying higher prices. Maybe, but they, maybe they've got a bit blasé about it over the years. But it's uh, it, it's different for uh, for Brentford supporters, and um, they should try and understand that. We haven't all operated at that level recently, so their uh, their experiences, their recent experiences of what they've had to play in the Premier League, they probably think they're paying uh, cheap ticket prices in the Championship when you look at some of the pricing in the Premier League. So um, maybe that's a, that affects their thought process. Leeds is a is a different kettle of fish. I'm not quite sure who's even in charge up at Leeds making these decisions. But I've never known a club to leave it so late to uh, inform us of the category of game, our prices, and also to send us the tickets. But I think that's just a, 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 an issue with their ownership at the moment. OK, Mark, and finally, I mean, you've said that you're going to the Football League and you're going to talk to them. But I'm wondering, is there anything the fans could do as well to just, you know, to, to help this issue? Well, I think the fans through the FSF will continue to, uh, you know, the, the, the 20s plenty campaign. There's plenty of, uh, it's fair to say that clubs are very aware of, of fans' opinions on various things, whether it's ticket prices, whether it's safe standing, uh, whether it's any other issues, the burning issues that, uh, um, that that fans are concerned about. And I think just continuing to um, to lobby the Football League and to lobby their own clubs with their concerns, keep it concise, keep Keep it constructive. Try to take the emotion out of it, and uh, you know, being too frank about your observations about some of the other clubs. But I, I think the point is well made. You know, about the guy who just couldn't afford to go to Norwich because it was going to cost him and his son 150 quid. Uh, when you add in, you know, fuel costs and everything else, I mean, it is 150 pounds to go and uh, to go and watch a, a football game. You know, total cost is. Uh, we, we are just going to price people out and I think the Football League are keen to see more and more people coming to Football League matches and, and things like that uh, things like fans continue to lobby the Football League as well as their own club um, uh, and keep, as I say just keep it positive, keep it concise, keep it constructive, uh, will help Alright Mark, thanks very much for chatting to us today. No problem at all Billy, you're welcome Ok, take care So the question I have for you is, I'm in the studio here with Michael Brugskill from the FSF and also Peter Lemoore from Norwich. He's a Norwich City fan. He's with us, me, Laney and Nick. Is this the downside of success, Michael? Well, obviously, as you go through the leagues, you do tend to see higher prices. Um, and I think it can particularly be a shock, maybe as you go from League One to the Championship, where there are some clubs, like Leeds United are obviously a very good example, and Norwich City, who do charge what would be perceived as Premier League prices still. Um, so I suppose that can be a, a shock. Um, these clubs often perceive themselves as Premier League clubs too, you know, and all but name. Um, and, and you do at Leeds get... I mean, the other week I was talking to a Wigan fan and he was arranging a boycott because the tickets he was going to buy, I think, was something like thirty-six, thirty-nine pound. You know, so it's very expensive. Okay, listen, I've, we've just been going through a load of prices. You know, Premier, I mean, Championship prices that you know Brentford fans have paid for this season. Okay, Norwich, thirty-five pounds, as we know. We we charge a Brentford charged them twenty-three pounds. They're charging us thirty-five pounds. Leeds United, thirty-four pounds. Charlton in a few weeks' time, twenty-four pounds, and kids are fiver. Rotherham, twenty-three pounds. Borough, £31. Wolves, £27. Wigan, £15. And that was quite interesting because £15 they, they charged us. And Brentford, even though it's quite away and quite expensive on the train, we took 1,500 fans up to Wigan. Bolton, £23. We took about six or 700 up there. Watford, £26. Um, Forest, £22. So I mean, we see the price differences there, but the ones that obviously stick out are things like Borough, 31. We didn't talk about Brighton last week, which is 30, what, 30 pounds as well. But then Brighton turned around and said, well, for 30 pounds, you also get your free train travel thrown in, which I think is, you know, sort of, that's quite nice. But to be fair, they are out, you know, they're out, they're out, they're out of town, Brighton, whereas it seems like Norwich aren't. So, you know, do we have to pay extra for the fact that they've actually put their stadium out of town? Right. Borough 31, Leeds 34, oh. Norwich 35, Ipswich 39, we've heard. Could be 39, 38, 37, 36. I mean, this this isn't right. You, you heard Mark Devlin say that he thought any price over £30 in the championship was too much. Don't you think so, lady? Yeah, I, I, I think Devlin's absolutely spot on with this. Um you know, it, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say that, but you know, it, I think it's refreshing that someone who's in charge of a football club is, is, has got the calls to, to, to say that. Um, and ho hopefully, he, he, he does, you know, 
raise it at the Football League and um, there's some agreement there. 30 quid is at the highest end so far um, and we're, we're kind of balking at that. And it, it, it kind of, I guess you forget it quite quickly if you win. Um, but looking forward, you know, I, 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 my heart goes out to the Brentford fan that's going to miss a game because he, he, he and his son can't afford both to go. And I, I take my son to as many away games as I can. I think it's my obligation as a, as a, as a diehard fan to, to pass the baton down through the generations. And, it, and it's making it more and more difficult. And I'm going to have to, you know, if unless he gets a job and he can pay his way, that I'm going to have to start deciding when when I can afford to take him. And Norwich really is is probably the last time I can afford to take him for a little while, I'd say. And that's I that that that's I think it's a shame we're missing out on a day out as a as a as a, as a sort of a son and father because these are the kind of days that you money just can't buy. These are the days that you'll always remember when I'm you know when I'm gone. Get your violin out, Nick. Um, you know it, these are the days that kind of bond you with your dad and your club and your identity. And this is why we're all football fans. And I, I just can't afford. To, I don't think I can afford to take him to Leeds. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm not skint by by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm I, there's a there's a line, and that that's way beyond the line in Ipswich. You know, hang your head in shame, to be honest. Look, I've, I've got to look at this. A club like Norwich, okay? They've got parachute payments of sixty million pounds over four years. They've got gates of twenty seven thousand, which they keep boasting about. Oh, we're full every week. So they've got twenty seven thousand people coming through their gates. Okay. So to me, there's one or two things. They've either got silly outgoings, or they believe in a strategy of charging wherever they can, and, and just they just get away with it, and it works. We've got Pete here. He's a Norwich fan. He's been going for years and years and years. Has it always been like that, Pete? And, and are you fans? Because it seems to be a lot of the Norwich fans have just resigned to playing higher prices. Um. I think being a Norwich fan, you, you, there's nothing else to do in the area. You, you're going to go and watch Norwich regardless. There's, there's no choice. Um, the nearest club is Ipswich, which is 40 miles away. No one around here likes Ipswich. We don't go to Ipswich. Peterborough is the other, the other side. It's too far. Um, if you're from Norfolk or, or, or North Suffolk, you'll go and watch Norwich. So they've got a captive audience. They know that. They realise that. They charge what they like. Um, it's not always been expensive. It got really expensive in the Premiership. Um, I think since then, since we've come down to the championship, they've reduced prices slightly, but not a lot. They've obviously got a lot of outgoings. We've got expensive players. Um, but I think basically it, it's it's the fact that there's very little else to do in the area. If you like football, you're going to watch Norwich, and they've got a captive audience, and that's what they do. They charge what they like, and, and people go, unfortunately. there's uh, We've got 22,000 season ticket holders. Um, as you said earlier, Billy, there's we're sold out most weeks, well certainly 95% this is sell out. Um, if we don't sell the away tickets, the home tickets, the home fans buy them, they seem to realise this and they seem to charge what they like and uh, get away with it and uh, that's pretty much how it is. So, but I've got to ask, I mean, I've, I've, I've outlined the fact that the parachute payments, your gates and with all due respect, you know, you, you guys, you're not even in the playoff place at the moment. It might change in the next few weeks but, yeah. you know, you're, you're there or thereabouts so you're not doing any better than your Bournemouths or your Brentfords no. or these other teams. So what makes you so special that you could charge more money? Um, I, I think, I mean, if you look at the stadium, the stadium is a great stadium. It's a great place to go and watch football. Um, it's The ground is not far from the city centre. It's a great away day. And I think that all plays on the fact that they charge what they like. Um, I think, personally, it's a complete rip-off. But the prices are, are certainly probably £10 too high. As, as you say, bought, um Brentford this Saturday is, is £35. It's the same for home fans. I, I'm a, a thing called a priority member where we pay £25 a year to become a priority member. We get £2 off the ticket, so £1.33 instead of £35. Um, it's far too high. They, they've categorised it. They've classed Brentford as a, as a Category A game, which, with all due respect to Brentford, um, I know you're doing very well, but Category A for Brentford does seem an awful lot. Um, early part of the season, we played Leeds United, and uh, it was a Tuesday evening game, and it was forty pounds. Um, so they do; they they completely roughly rip us off. I reckon they should charge you fifty quid for watching us. We're that good. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Brentford are doing really well. I, I went to Brentford early in the season, and you know, we, although we won three 0 you, you played cracking that night, and you've done really well since. So keep an eye on your results, and you're doing really well. Um, but I still think thirty-five pound for Brentford is is, is extortionate. 
the same as you do. Because yeah, I think the other important thing is that uh, Norwich have got, um, it's, it's a long way, it's quite an expensive train journey, even from London. Over the next two months, I think Brentford are the last London team that will be able to get to, to Norwich without having to catch a bus. Um, for the Ipswich game, it would be particularly ridiculous because there's no direct rail service from, from London to Ipswich when we play them. So not only are we faced with paying extortionate rail prices, extortionate ticket prices, but we'll also be travelling half the way to Ipswich by bus. I was lucky for the Norwich game. I, you know, the, the, the minute we got knocked out of the cup, that evening to drown my sorrows, I went on the National Rail site and found that actually you could get a £5 ticket off to, to Norwich for Saturday's game. So so put that one up and, and put it round on the circles and lots of Brentford fans came in. But I feel sorry for the Norwich supporters because I know there are a lot of London Canary fans who travel up on a fortnightly basis. It's going to take them forever to get up to see their home team playing and they're paying them 30 Two pounds was it that people were saying? Five. Sorry, football was just becoming Rickens. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-three of their uh, priority members, two pound off. But yeah, the same thing. I mean, where I drink, there's there's London Canaries in there, and they're always moaning about prices. It's 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 the same. Everyone is different. We're sick of paying those prices. But if you want to see the team, they don't seem to to, to waver. That's the price. And I think it's the fact that it's nearly full all the while. They don't seem to uh, too keen to to lower the price for that reason. Um, Seems to be if you don't want to go, someone else will take your place. Uh, season tickets, twenty-two thousand. There's a, there's a list to be a season ticket holder. Um, so they seem to have the monopoly, I'm afraid, and that's why they charge what they like. Um, Peter, you, know, you talked about um, the pricing issues and how much you paid at different places. Michael, yeah. reciprocal pricing. This is one of the campaigns that the FSF has been talking about quite a lot, and they're making a bit of headway on this as well, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. The FSF. Um the Football Supporters Federation, we've for quite a while now argued for what's called, we call it 20s plenty for away tickets. And the central idea is that um, as a, I'm a Sunderland fan, um, if I go to Newcastle, I'll get a 20 quid ticket. In return, any Newcastle fans coming to Sunderland, they will get a 20 quid ticket. And it's to reward the loyalty of the away supporter, <clears throat> to acknowledge the, the input that they have into the game, both from an atmosphere point of view, um, but also, I mean, in a Premier League context, also what they do for the TV cameras, and obviously clubs um, derive vast amounts of revenue from TV, so we are fans are important for that. In this, the campaign, the FSFS has 20s plenty, has actually had some successes. We, there's a number of clubs now um, taking it on board and have done a lot of reciprocal deals, and we totted up that during 2013-14 season, um, we saved that idea, 20s plenty, saved fans £342,000. Um, it was, it was mm -hmm. around about, um, I think it was 30 odd thousand fans benefited from it. So it has had some success in the Premier League context. Now, I think the challenge is um, is getting, beyond, getting it beyond that, you know, and getting it into the Football League as well and making sure that those clubs take it up. Now, there's no reason football clubs in the Football League can't. I know Barnsley and Derby have done a reciprocal deal. But obviously what we hear from a lot of football league clubs is them saying, and it's a fair point, that they don't have the, the media rights, the media revenue that the Premier League can, that the Premier League clubs get, so that they struggle, maybe they would say they struggle to subsidise the, the tickets in the same way. However, I mean, I, I know um, Billy's involved with the FSF and really about it. we want to really kick on and find ways in the football league to to encourage clubs to do more reciprocal deals or maybe put ceilings on deals. It's interesting to hear that your CEO is talking about the 30 quid max. Even in itself that he's willing to talk about that and broach that subject, that's progress, you know. Maybe that's a start, maybe that's a negotiation point. Maybe he says 30 quid, maybe we say 20 quid, maybe we'll meet in the middle and maybe 25 quid is a, is a price that people can live with. Um, but there's also other ways as well. I'm, I'm particularly interested in football league clubs do these things called local promos, don't they? Where four times per season, it's, as a, a clubs will sell cheap tickets to their home fans. Now, if you've got a season ticket, you might not even notice, but they do do it. And um, quite often we hear from people complaining who go to away games because they miss out on the local promos. They're an away fan going, travelling away from home, and the football league club that they're going to hasn't is actually charging them more than home fans 
considerably more, which is unfair. So as a starting point, at the very least, we think football league clubs can and should afford to pass on these local promotion deals to away fans. That would instantly um, save tens of thousands of away fans hundreds of thousands of pounds. But obviously in the long run, we'd also like to see football league clubs doing more reciprocal deals like we have seen in the Premier League. And I mean, that's probably pointed towards something like the scheme that we do once a year, which is the pay as you can scheme, where we last year it was pay a pound or two or three years ago, you pay a pound to get into Brentford or more if you wanted to. Only the home fans could do it, but the away fans were charged full price. So I think last season it was Stevenage, this year it was Rotherham. Stevenage probably brought down about 300 fans last year. Rotherham brought down 450 fans. Yeah. Maybe there's an argument that if they were going to get charged, you know, whatever they wanted to, Rotherham might have brought down 900 or 1,000 fans this, this year. And and just one more point on that. I think that it's almost like a, a mindset that clubs have got, you know, that oh, we need a cater for home fans, yeah, but away fans don't matter, you know, they're not ours, you know. That's the away club's problem. But actually, if you think about it, the most loyal away fans go to away games time and time again. And there's certain clubs that I've been to that I've, I've deliberately went back to again and again because I had a great away day there, you know, and there's other ones that I, I haven't been to so much, you know. I can't make every away game, so I have, to, I have to be a bit picky in that sense. So I think home clubs can also think of away fans as fans who come back time and again. It might only be once a season, but over the years that builds up, you know. And I think... If, as a home fan, I think it would be good if home fans said to their clubs, look, maybe you should do these deals for away fans as well. And if you do it for that club's away fans, can you not talk to that club and get them to do it for us in return? I, I think I think what we're witnessing as well is just this kind of clash of um, clash of cultures and clash of uh, CEOs and um, MDs and what their brief is. For some clubs, it's about growing their fan base. For others, is about completely maxing out the, the the biggest revenue that you possibly can out of that fan base, and that's ramping up prices of everything until people squeak, and then at that point you reassess. Um, you know, at Brentford, I guess we're in a different growth model to to, to Norwich, um, but yeah, I, I, it can never it can never be right where you just charge the most you can until people can't afford it anymore and at that point you then reevaluate. Um, you know, you you just gotta go back to how you know to what these clubs are all about and it's it is about the community. You know, if they've got a community scheme, which all clubs have, there's a commitment to growth and um uh and and, 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 and this kind of harmony and and this kind of like cooperative between the, 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 the place where the club is and the town where the club is and, and and its heritage, and it, you're pricing great swathes of people out of it. Yeah, the stadiums might be full, but there's it it, it, it sticks in your throat. It's, it's it's a really unethical way of uh, of, of of going forward. It, it's not about getting the most you can per ticket. It's it's about charging what's right and 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 creating some sort of sense of unity. Not like you know you, you kind of begrudge it. You you shouldn't you shouldn't feel that way. It's interesting you say that, Dave, because, uh, I mean, as, as, as uh, Michael says, yes, I'm involved in the SFSF, and I actually went into a meeting with uh, Mr. Scudamore at the Premier League at the beginning of the year. And, and one thing that he did do, you know, it's a, it was a good two-way conversation there, but one thing he did point out, he said, look, you keep on saying that you want prices lowered, but, you know, why should we do this? Because our stadiums are 99% full in the Premier League, that is. So he said that in one breath, but then the other breath, he said, but... We're not particularly happy with the crowds that we've got. You know, he didn't mean to say that in other words, but he's saying the quality wasn't as good as he liked because the atmosphere was a bit stayed. So what they're doing is that they're getting people to pay 50, 60, 70 pounds, all these high prices, and you've got a vibe that kind of wasn't there because you're excluding large parts of society. So in a way, he was sort of pointing towards saying, look, how could you think we can actually pull in these other parts of society that we that we kind of excluded from football, how can we get them involved in football again? So it's almost like they're wanting their cake and eat it too. And like I said, talking to Mr. Mark Devlin earlier, he seemed to understand the balance between actually getting the money in and also still keeping that, that equilibrium within, you know, the community, within the, the, the fan base, bringing the right types of crowds into it and building it in the right way. That's because, that's because the people running our games aren't visionaries. 
they they are just commercial money driven monsters that could not see this is going to happen. You know, it it doesn't take it doesn't take a genius to work out that if you put price if prices in the Premiership are seventy quid, sixty quid per ticket, people, working class men and women can't afford it. So all you're going to get is the prawn sandwich brigade. And then if you don't want the prawn sandwich brigade because they don't sing, you shouldn't have raised the prices in the first place. So the people to blame are the people or the people in charge, and they won't ever admit that though. That's the problem. <laughs> I think there's somebody else who you can have a go at as well, which is the TV companies. I mean, I know that the Football League television de deal is about to be renegotiated, but it strikes me, anybody who watched the Preston, I can't remember who they were playing game last week on a Friday night, there was nobody in that Orient. stadium. Orient. Yeah, that's right. So Friday night, expecting Orient fans to travel up from London. There was nobody in that stadium at all. The, the atmosphere was dull and flat. I only watched 10 minutes of the game myself, but you thought the TV company must have been wanting to pipe in like they do at Wigan, a drummer, to create some atmosphere. Um, if if the TV companies were to turn around to the to the clubs and say, "Look, we're worried about the size of the about the atmosphere that's being created. We can't hear any singing taking place. Your product doesn't look very good." You look at the clips on the Football League show on a Saturday night. Most Championship clubs playing in those big stadiums. And Norwich and Brentford accepted, uh, you'll see acres of wide open space of uh, seating with nobody in it at all. It's not sending out a very good message about what the product is. And I reckon the, um, the television companies themselves might come along and say, look, you know, we're prepared to pay you X millions of pounds for this product to the clubs, but you have got to help us out by providing an audience that creates some atmosphere. Or am I being idealistic about that? Well, again, I mean, the, the principle, yes, it's, it, you are correct. And obviously, TV companies pay, you know, they pay, was it £5 billion last time because they're expected to get something. Obviously, they see value in the game, not only in the players and the beautiful game and the stadia, but also in the atmosphere that's bought. And the ironic thing about it is that is the fans that create the atmosphere. At one moment, you know, football television companies, they're all talking about, say, we love, we love the fans. They're so great. They create a great atmosphere. But what we do is that we create the atmosphere, and it's almost like us creating more atmosphere puts more money into the game than, than they price us out the game. So it's almost like we, we, we're sort of creating the monster ourselves in a strange kind of way from being who we are. And I think the thing that flabbergasted me when I went into that meeting in, in the Premier League, and maybe just shows me that I don't understand the way that these things work, is that when the money came in from the top, and if all of a sudden somebody comes in and says, look, here's five billion pounds, that money isn't sort of, sort of siphoned off to a certain extent to say, right, out of this five billion, we're going to put X amount of money into the fans, this amount of money into grassroots, this amount of money here, this amount of money there, then the clubs get the rest. Now, apparently what they do pretty much is they, do, they pretty much almost split it 22 ways or whatever it is in the Premier League, and everyone gets an equal amount. And that really, I, I thought, how is that going to be helping the game? Because no one's going to, not one of these clubs is going to turn around and say, actually, we need to, feed this money back in to actually kind of to keep this game alive to keep it going to be a fly on the wall in that would just be the most stunning experience bill when that money was divvied up when 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 those chips were pushed each way not one person i guarantee in that room said anything about fans or atmosphere or absolutely anything to do with the heart and soul i i almost guarantee it I think it's it's worth referencing as well. I know there's a lot of talk about the Premier League deal here, and it's worth picking the foot up slightly uh, because, like Nick said, and this is about a Premier League context and um, not necessarily Football League, but like Nick said, the, the TV companies pay so much, particularly in the Premier League, they're all going to want um, full stadiums. Now, the Premier League, the, the Premier League TV deal before this one was around about, I think it was around about three and a half billion so this one jumped up to around about five and a half billion. What that means is, if you if you pick the figures apart, that's like the two billion increase. Every fan at every Premier League game last season could have been let in for free, and the clubs wouldn't have seen a drop in income overall compared to the previous deal because that couple of billion equates to fifty quid to every fan at every game. That's how much money you're talking about. And I think if you if you combine some of that being actually spread amongst fans and 
and used to freeze or bring down ticket prices, and also the FSF believes in a more equitable distribution of income through the leagues, i.e. a lot more of that Premier League money should be shared with the Football League because I think one of the special things about Britain is the strength and depth um, that we'll have, the, the, the size of clubs right throughout the Football League and, and the conference even. So I think if you combine those two things, you see the amount of money we're talking about, there's enough money to bring down ticket prices and for clubs still to have plenty of money. Um, because if they keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, what you're going to end up with is people turning their backs from the live game and you're going to end up with empty stands like Nick Sears and you're going to end up with TV companies saying, well, we don't want to pay that much money. So I actually think for freezing tickets or bringing down ticket prices, it actually doesn't necessarily lead to an income loss for the clubs that it's actually long-term protection of their product for want of a better word you know for the live their tv deals that they get because um if they don't and if you raise a generation of fans who think you know what i can't afford to go to the game what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and sit in the pub and i'm going to have two or three pints with my mates and watch the game there because it costs us half the price of what it does to do a game to go to a game to sit in the pub a couple of pints cost cost you a tenner should I do that? Yeah, and you grow up doing that. You never get into the habit. You know, match going is a habit, and it needs to be habit forming when you're young. I don't think it's suddenly people when they get to 25 and they've got a bit of disposable income. I don't think many people suddenly think, "Oh, I'm going to become a football fan." I think it's ingrained in you as well, you know. So I think for clubs long term financial security, I really think we need to make sure they don't lose this next generation of fans too. Pete, Peter, just coming to you. I mean, you're a Norwich fan. Like I said, you know, you're, you're used to paying these prices because, like I said, there's nothing else to do. But let's be honest. Let's say hypothetically Norwich didn't go up this season. They didn't go up next season. What would your thoughts, or what do you think the, thought, the fans' thoughts would be? I think they'd be screaming at um, the chief exec to, to lower prices. Um, I think this season, the fact that we're, we've just come down from the Premiership, hope is high. Um, we've had a, a change of management recently. Um, I think we're expecting to at least make the playoffs. Um, I think if we don't go up this season or next season, I think there'll be a lot of trouble in Norwich, and I think you'll see the crowds dwindle because of the price, and that's that the problem. And that's they're prepared to lower the prices. I, th I think you'll find most supporters coming to Norwich, most Norwich supporters like the away fans. Um, there is great banter, and you, I'm surprised that you said that they were they were disappointed and, and, and they were happy to, to let you pay 35 because I think... You know the games with the away support in Norwich is terrific, and and most of the supporters I know they go there and they do like the banter with the away fans, and that, that really is a big thing at Norwich. So I'm surprised that they said, you know, pay your 35 pounds, take it or leave it. That was a bit of a bit of a surprise with that one. Like maybe you find that those are the fans that actually don't go to every yeah, match anyway. It's, it's, it's not the attitude of most fans. I wouldn't have thought to be fair. I'd have thought most of them would say, no, lower your prices, bring the supporters, and we'll have a good day out. That's what normally happens. Can I ask a question, Pete, and find out what the, the um, atmosphere is like in the stadium at Carrow Road? Because I did notice it's the only ticket I've had for an away game this year where it says very firmly on the bottom, uh, do not stand, persistent standers will be uh, ejected from the ground. Um, it doesn't look a very humorless stadium, a humor friendly stadium to go to. I wondered if you had any comment about that. Um, I think as an away support, you can stand up and you'll be fine. As a home supporter, you stand up, you'll get thrown out. Um, it's not like Brentford. Brentford is all standing. I, I was in the Brentford end when we played there, and it's very partisan, very noisy. Norwich is, if we're doing well, it's a great place to watch football. If it's not, if we're not playing well, which we haven't done recently, it can be a bit of a library. Um, and the away fans tend to enjoy it more than the home fans, unfortunately. Um, after saying that, it's a great place to go. Uh, before the game, the pubs are brilliant. They're all very friendly. You can go anywhere you like, and it's it's a terrific atmosphere. Probably better before the game than during the game sometimes, unfortunately. But um, I think the, the the stewards tend to jump on the home fans more than the away fans. You know, the away fans will stand up the whole game and sing and chant, and no one says a word. And two or three home fans stand up, and the stewards jump on them. And uh, it does. Um, will you give us our money back? Now. We get chucked out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that happens, though. <laughs> so yeah, we're looking forward to see you in the coach and horses on Saturday, anyway. Yes, yeah, yeah. Come up there, bring the bring the lads. It's a it's a it's a very welcoming city, to be fair. It's um, never any trouble. Though. You know, it's 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 great for away fans. It's if you if you ask any away fans, most of them like to come to Norwich for that reason. They're 
plus the fact they normally get three points as well. <laughs> Doesn't help. <laughs> so listen, just so, so summing up to this. So I mean, I know we've got Michael. You know, you've got your campaigns going on. You've got your twenties plenty. We've got the categorization thing for us as lower league fans, as we call ourselves. As we're not in the prem, but we're a lower sort of down. You know, we want to see some more focus on getting a little bit of parity, getting getting the fans to get some say, to get some, on this ticket um, situation in the lower leagues, in the championship, in Division 1, in Division 2. And yes, we know the TV money isn't the same as it is in the Prem, but still there are things to be done because if a team like Brentford can charge 23 and £24 pounds to away fans and we are fifth in the league, and then you've got a team like Norwich who charges £35 pounds with 60 million TV money and, and 27,000 crowd, there's something that's just not quite right there. And, and, you know, like I said, the business plan needs to be looked at, the strategy needs to be looked at of clubs like that, who obviously are paying out too much money to their players who obviously aren't performing. And there's obviously different ways that they need to be doing their business. So it's not like they can't do it. It's just that it's ingrained into their heads that they need to charge these prices. And then certain fans are thinking... Because the prices are this much, then they are. So I'm just thinking, what can be done to actually get this parity? I know that you guys are doing lots of things with the SF FSF, but is there any way that we can get involved? Is there any way that other people can get involved? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are actually lessons to be learned from another campaign that the FSF runs called the Safe Standing Campaign. And for years, I think um, the FSF and other fans groups like sort of banged on only at the headline authorities to say, why don't you back safe standing? You know, so we'd, we'd go on to the FA and the Premier League and the Football League. We weren't getting too far. And then what we did was we changed tact slightly. Um, because these organisations keep insisting that trade bodies and they keep saying we need our individual members, i.e. clubs, to come to us with these um, issues, we started trying to get inside the clubs, you know, and winning clubs over one by one to the safe standing campaign. And I think Brentford were actually one of those clubs. I'm, I think I'm right in saying the Brentford um, formerly back safe standing trial, along with um, we won over loads of Premier League clubs, we won over dozens of Football League clubs, and it ended up that um, the Football League debated this at the AGM. And would win so many clubs over that two thirds of the football league clubs voted in favour of having a safe standing trial. So now, official football league policy is to back um, safe standing. Now, obviously, we then need the football league to to lobby the government too to allow that to happen. But you can see if you can get inside and you can win the clubs over one by one when they take these things to their AGMs, the vote on them, and that becomes football league policy. And this is exactly what we need fans to do. And it sounds like the ball's already rolling at Brentford, so you could be a real leader. If, um, if Mark Devlin is, is willing to take this type of issue to the Football League, you know, get in touch with the FSF, we'll have a chat and we'll we'll sort of get on the inside track, you know, and start start making arguments to, to Mark so that when he does take it to the table at the Football League, well, um, other CEOs, other chief execs at clubs are, are probably more likely to listen to him than, than um than fans from other clubs, you know. So I think the lesson is for each fan, each fans group of their their own club to lobby their own executives, you know, because I think the FSF can do that at a national level. I think that's our role and we do do that and we will continue to do that. But also, it's too easy for the clubs to ignore if there isn't that local pressure from their own fan base because at the end of the day, that's who pays the bills, you know. You pay the bills for Brentford, not me, so you need to get in it to get your executives and the same goes for the clubs around the country, you know, from Norwich and everyone else. And I also think it's really good to live this that um like Pete's on here and he's had a really like civilized conversation with you guys. There's no like like backbiting about it or whatever. Because sometimes you see fans almost take some weird um like it's almost like they're proud to appear over the hood, you know, or they're not bothered if they're charging away fans coming to their club through the nose. And it's just you know, you know, because if you fall into that it's a debate and rule, isn't it? I think supporters need to stick together argue for each other, you know, argue that fans coming to your club deserve decent prices and hopefully in return they do the same for you. And that's right and uh, I mean interesting because obviously the banter that we had with the, the Norwich fans, there are quite a few Norwich fans who were saying £35 is totally acceptable, you know, uh, uh, supply and demand, and if you don't like it, don't turn up, which we thought was really strange that they were just basically instigating that fans could come down and they should be charged as much as possible. We thought the fans should stay together. So this is a word to say fans out there actually know the prices don't have to stay the same. You just need to actually 
you know, get off your asses a little bit, take a little bit of action because if you actually make a little bit of noise, people will start listening. Exactly. So, listen, so listen, good little debate this, lads, and uh, learned quite a lot and I hope people out there learned a lot as well just to realise that ticket prices aren't necessarily what they are because we can actually make them change. Yes, we're going to have to stomach 35 quid for Norwich, 34 quid for Leeds, but to be quite honest with you, we're going to have a good day out in Norwich anyway this year, whether or not we go back again next year if we're in the same league, that's a different story and Norwich will have to deal with that. But listen, listen I want to thank, thank you to Michael from the FSF. Nice one for coming on today. Thank you very much for Peter up in Norwich. We're going to see you with the coaching horses on Saturday. No worries. And, see you there, buddy. That's right, man. And uh, talk to you later, lads.